The Systems page allows approved users to make changes to the ExactVision server name, license, date and time, as well as network settings. The Systems page may also be used to view watchdog timers, monitor hardware, and even update the server software. The Systems tab displays useful information about the server, as well as fields for both the system name and the license key. To change the system name, highlight the current name and type in the new one. The name will be reflected in the configuration tree to the left. Additional metadata about the system may be entered in the fields below the system name. The license key is tied to the MAC address of your server's network interface and will determine the type of ExactVision software installed on the server and number of IP cameras that may be connected to it at any one time. The server MAC address is displayed beneath the key field. If you are updating your server and have been given a new or updated license key, click the Import Key button and select the key file. The license may also be typed in manually. The Global Settings section allows the user to set timeout periods for control of PTZ, two-way audio, and video push. This timeout period locks out other users from interfering with other users already performing one of these tasks for the number of seconds desired. Lastly, the Export buttons found under both the License and Settings sections can be used to back up your server settings and license. This is recommended in the case of a future reinstall. The Date Time tab allows the user to change the date and time of the server. To change the time zone of the server, use the drop down menu to select the appropriate time zone. The time server, if enabled, will periodically synchronize the server's time to either an external or internal time server, depending on which is entered. Note that the date and time synchronization will not properly execute if the server does not have the ability to contact the server due to a network configuration. Finally, if the cameras need to have their own time synchronized to a server other than the ExactVision server, enter the address in this field. Click Apply to save the changes. If you choose the Enable Override box and use a host name, the cameras will need to have a valid DNS address configured. You may need to contact your network administrator to make certain you are using the correct settings. The Network tab can be used to change the network settings on the system. A list of available interfaces is shown on the left-hand side. To configure a network connection, select the interface on the left and then choose either Static or Dynamic for the IP configuration. A static connection is usually recommended for your camera network. If you've selected Static, Input the desired IP address settings and click the Apply button. If your cameras require a DHCP server for addressing, you may opt to use the Enable DHCP Server checkbox. Before you select this option, ensure that no other DHCP server resides on the network segment or it may cause problems on your network. The IP reconnection setting controls how often the server will attempt to reconnect to a disconnected camera. The capabilities of remote client bandwidth throttling have been greatly expanded and have thus been moved to their own tab, reachable by the link provided here. The Active Directory LDAP tab is only available for enterprise licensed systems. This tab allows a user to enter their Active Directory or LDAP server details for use with the ExactVision software. Your network administrator can provide you with more information on the use of Active Directory and LDAP. The next two tabs provide information about the hardware found on an ExactVision server. Note that only servers manufactured by Exact support watchdog timers and hardware monitoring. The Watchdog Timers tab will display enabled timers that have the ability to restart devices should they stop working. The Hardware Monitoring tab will show information about the voltage, temperature, and fan speed of various components in the server. A red alarm will display for any components that are not within the allowable operating values. The Update tab allows the server to be remotely updated via either an internet connection or by using an offline package update utility. If the server has internet access, simply click the Check for Updates button. 
use the drop-down menu to select the desired server version and click Update to remotely update the software. The update procedure will subsequently cause a brief delay in recording while the operation takes place. The Show Advanced Options box utilizes a software package utility found on the Exact Software Downloads page. The Outbound Connections tab will be used by dealers only. On this page, a user may enter the address and credentials to connect the server to the Integrator Services Portal for monitoring. The Security tab allows an administrator to set various policy or user access rules for the server. Password strengthening is a one-way operation in which the stored passwords of users are hashed and salted to further strengthen security against unauthorized access. Enabling user lockouts sets a maximum number of incorrect login attempts for users before that user is locked out. An administrator may then unlock their account to grant them permission to log in again. If the Enable Login Lockout Auto Reset is configured, then the account will unlock itself after a desired number of minutes rather than requiring an administrator to unlock it. The Enable Inactivity Lockout will lock accounts that have not logged into the system after the desired number of days. Enabling password expiration will force users to update their password on a regular basis, another method of keeping your server secure. Finally, the Bandwidth tab. Remote client bandwidth throttling can limit the total amount of data sent to all of your remote client machines, which could be useful if there are network traffic restrictions. Alternatively, you may choose to create very specific throttling profiles here for clients connected over WAN or for machines with specific IP addresses. In the schedule window, you may even choose to create rules based on the time of day if your network has periods of heavier usage during certain hours.